So I was doing a repeat job today, cutting some cylinder valve reliefs. Wasn't going to film any of this because it's been on my channel several times before. If you're interested in seeing how that's done, you can go back and watch those videos, but I'll maybe I do a little public service announcement here on this one. So Here's this unopened cylinder bag from this overhaul kit. And let's take a look here about what it says about these. So it's important. Pistons have been installed in the cylinder liners reduce the possibility of piston ring damage during shipping. For installing new piston rings and cylinder liners, the parts must be broken to ensure a proper seal between the piston rings and cylinder liners. Blah, blah, blah. Spec parts sure they are clean, free defects, correct for your application, install parts, assembly, and recording procedures, specified risk, equipment, manufacturer manual, blah 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 blah. Yeah, that doesn't say here specifically, so let me get the book. I was unable to find anything definitive about this, but uh, it does say power pack assembly save time performing the overhaul. Customers not have Wait for machine shop rebuilds old connecting rods, older power pack symbols, everything you need. Pre assembled cylinder kit. Anyway, I don't know what their intention is because I didn't find anything specific. In John Deere world, they kind of expect you to uh, push the liner out of the bottom, put the uh, wrist pin through your connecting rod and stick it back together. They don't recommend taking the liner assemblies apart. However, I'm going to say you can go ahead and skip that. Uh, if you're capable of rebuilding an engine, you should probably be capable of getting the pistons back in without breaking the rings on them. And that's the main reason why they do that is because sometimes people break the rings on them, take them apart. But let's take a look here at what I found machining those. I also say that aluminum is a little softer than the deer aluminum. The machine's nicer. Let's uh, take a look here at this cylinder kit. I'm going to pull it out see if you notice anything. First time out of the bag. So there's their assembled assembly. I said normally the deer books tell you to just push them down. Like this and you can get the snap ring out. Pull your wrist pin, put your cylinder, put your connecting rod back in and stick it back in. But uh, let's go ahead and pop this out and take a look. Try and keep this on film. This is going to be the first time out of here. I'm trying not to shoot it out either. All right, so I'm gonna try and push this out here and you'll see what's going on. Here's the gap in the piston ring. We know. That one air staggered. <laughs> Figures. That's what the one before looked like. There's another one. Well, it looks like two out of Six of them were staggered. Interesting. Of course, the, the only one I go get the camera for comes out right. But, I'm just telling you that you should probably check these to see if they are indeed staggered because some of them were not.
same cutter I used before on this job. If you go back and look at that video, you'll see it probably performed a little differently. about putting the big diesel pistons in a vise like that and uh, you can see there's no mark on it so I hope you enjoyed that little public service announcement video there on the pistons uh, as the moral of the story is to just check everything and you'll avoid some problems that are potentially there that you may not have known about uh, if you just made the assumption that everything was right when it came to you, you would probably wind up with an engine with extra blow-by in this particular case with four out of six of them not being correct. So it doesn't appear to be a lot of quality control in some of these uh, things that you buy today. It definitely appears to have gone downhill pretty much across the board. So got to keep your eye out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you later.